Welcome, Lisa Franco, to SHA Music TV. I almost forgot the name of my show. <laughs> the SHA Music TV. We got talking, and uh -huh. yeah, I forgot all about how to do my intro. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're talking today about self-produced concerts, and that is a term that you came up with. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you do. So I would love for you to tell us what is a self-produced concert? Well, it's something that I have learned over the past few years, you know, as all of our artists know that the record industry and the promotion managers, agents, all those things that used to thrive in past years has sort of dried up as far as availability and they just, they don't have enough going on to keep them existing. So the artist has had to learn to take control of their own uh, situation, actually. And the amount of venues compared to the amount of artists worthy of performing in venues is sort of off balance. So a lot of uh, great artists end up, you know, not getting these slots and these gigs and these coveted places because we outnumber the venue. So a lot of artists will sit idle because of it. And um, there's so many buildings in the country and there's so many ways that you can self-promote concerts, create the whole thing from beginning to end. Granted, you know, we are a, a touring act. So we usually have a, a theater date or a larger venue as an anchor date in the, which help us choose which direction to tour. But after that anchor date, it's really up to us to fill in the blanks. So I, we find uh, churches. Churches are the perfect size, seating one or 200 people. Churches of every denomination uh, often are welcoming of music and events because they can benefit too. We usually offer a 70-30 split. Quite often we're sending an email or a letter to a first time person who thinks, that would be a nice idea, but we don't know how to do a concert. And then we assure them, don't worry, the things that you'll have to do are minimal. We will handle this and this and this, which is basically the, the promotion and the posters and the flyers and the leaflets. All they have to do is reach out to their own people, their own congregation. They may accept me mailing a few posters to put up on the bulletin boards, and the rest is up to us. So we stress to them that it is a no risk, nothing to be afraid of, very easy to do that we are all going to benefit from. And quite often they'll make several hundred dollars of their cut just for enjoying some music and, and helping us out a little bit with the promotion. But we assure them that we do this all the time and we know exactly what we're doing. And every step along the way that I've learned is sort of what I put together in the book so that everyone else can actually do it. It's not rocket science. It's just little tasks in a correct order that are very, very effective. Okay. So this is kind of a situation where I like to call it a concert in a box. Like we'll bring you the concert exactly. and you provide the audience. Is, That's is right. That or kind of how it works? Actually, it's just the building because a lot mm -hmm. of the presenters might be afraid. Well, I don't know if we can get, you know, Thelma Lou will come and her family, but I don't think we can get an audience and they're sort of afraid. So we are assuring them that we will provide the audience and how we okay. do that is by naming a show, something that sounds really interesting. Like we have a show called legends of the Celtic harp and we tell stories and play music through time. And, and we have other show wondrous stories and amazing instruments and that sort of thing that draws people in. So I basically just go through the standard, filling out the calendars on all the events page of the newspapers. Most people don't realize uh, news shows and ch TV channels all have their calendars of events with that strong show title right in front. Put your mm -hmm. name later, especially if you're not as known in the area, but just have a strong show title and people will come. They will come. They're looking for something to do. They're reading the papers. Most importantly, I write to the editor of the paper a personal note with our little press release. Mm -hmm. that says, this is a very special show. We're touring through on this day. Um, the people of the town would probably really enjoy hearing this music. And by the way, we're also stopping at the so-and-so school to be a presentation for the uh, elementary kids. So that that's another part awesome. that I stress in my book is this really get clear on how you're going to pay it forward as you go. Because okay. if you're just another band listing your show in the press release and the calendar, that's pretty ho-hum. But if you are a band that's also visiting old folks home to do a free concert for their residents 
or doing a presentation for the kids at the school or stopping by the hospital lobby to play some music, then you have a human interest story. Then you have a press release. So okay. getting clear on your mission, for example, for me, I stumbled into doing therapeutic hospital music and that has been my lead all the time because every time I go to a town, I not only do a concert, but I check out, will the music, would the music be welcome in the hospital? Would they like to do a little lunchtime thing? No cost to the hospital. I do something really nice fill up the time on the road and then have something else to talk about in a press release so it's a win-win for everybody by doing it that way so whatever turns on the musician are you a fishing expert are you a you know a writer are you a travelogue person have you got an interesting travel blog anything that is special about you of which there's something special about everybody right. that's where you go because it needs to be authentic it needs to be what you care about you know are you a okay. master chef well maybe you could do some music at the such and such place as an offering for the such and such you know just there's something that you can tie into more than you're just your performance. Just your music. Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds pretty awesome. So when going back to when you were talking about naming your show, something interesting that will mm -hmm. make people want to come, exactly. um, that, that kind of strikes me because, you know, working with independent artists, when they go to different towns and cities, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, a lot of people don't know their name. So yeah. putting your name on a yeah. flyer doesn't yeah. really grab, yeah. grab people's attention that much. So that branding yeah, exactly. of that name mm -hmm. makes Suzy a huge Q, difference. The, yeah, Susie Q, the folk singer, is not going to bring people out. But if she called it enchanting love songs from around the globe, that's going to bring out Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so because right. it sounds very nice. You know, and yeah, there's sounds like a good date night. <laughs> yeah, something about your show that is going to bring out the people you, you care about and sing about animals or the welfare of such and such or whatever is your deep, intermission that has to be forward and it has to be presented in a way that just looks appealing you know are you okay. special uh are you special banjo player well there's probably some awesome history of the banjo that you're gonna can include and have some leaflets or just make it a theme a th find the theme of your show and let it let that carry you through your uh, your title of your show and the way that you market the show if that's how you want to get butts in seats you know everywhere we go we can at least get one or two hundred people that we've never heard have never heard of us before mm -hmm. into a building and that's a pretty miraculous thing considering they have all this incredible cable tv and all these reasons to stay home just to right. get people to go out i think people are very willing as long as they sort of trust something about your show title that's mm -hmm. going to make it okay for them you know, and even expand your show. Why not have beautiful slides behind you of imagery or space or just something that you can now call it an interactive multimedia presentation of all different forms of love or something. You know, there's just so many things. The great wonders of the world with the most beautiful folk music of the Appalachian tradition or, you know, just yeah. you can massage it out of whatever you're doing and really go with that. And that is the key. Okay. Creating your well, own we're going to take a break there and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about um, how you get started in it and how other artists can get started, like your best advice for other artists to get started sure. in it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you a Christian artist who has recorded at least a single, but not sure where to go from here? Are you looking for performance opportunities, but not sure where to start? Hi. I'm Simone Henry, the founder of Eshe Music, and I've set aside time in my schedule to speak specifically to your needs. Schedule a call with me now at eshemusic.com slash MMA. That's E-C-H-E music.com slash MMA. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Okay, welcome back. Eshe Music TV. I'm Simone Henry. We're talking to Lisa Franco about how she got started in self-produced concerts. So give us kind of the, the beginning. What's the beginning of this story? Okay. Well, I actually was lucky enough that I had a, a big record deal um, with Wyndham Hill, and I got to tour all the fancy things with all the artists and managers for a while before the in record industry sort of collapsed. But I came up as a self-made street performer, so I kind of had and my own record label. So I kind of had my foot in both worlds. So by the time agents sort of disappeared and record labels folded, I was able and ready to 
create my own path based on everything I had been through and known. And everything I've done has really been logical from tried and just from trying and failing and learning everything I can learn from it. And anybody can do this. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have a show together, that you know what you're doing, that your music is professional enough to present, which I'm sure your followers are. Yes. Yeah. And so, but then where do you go from there? Just take a test, uh, test run, go look at your map and go three hours north and find a little town there. Mm -hmm. Little towns are easier than big cities because you can own it with every bulletin board and you will get a something in the paper and people are looking for something to do. San Francisco, New York, LA is really hard to um, make something happen. So you're safe mm -hmm. in a smaller size rural town. And just you know, find out where the venues can be, community center, churches, uh, any kind of uh, school building, there's always places. And a simple email, my book actually has the exact sample of email that you can write to introduce yourself very briefly, say what you're interested in doing, how it could be mutually beneficial. Most venues say, well, we don't have money for this. What is this going to cost? It costs them nothing. It's a 70-30 split. And, um, you know, it's, it's very low risk for everybody. So you pick a town three hours north and three hours west and three hours east and you do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday weekend, right? right? And you just start small and modest and you look to get 30 to 70 people to your show, name mm -hmm. it, put it in the paper. This all happens at least a couple of months before the show press releases and all that six to eight weeks before the show. But quite often we have our shows booked a year out. But a few months is fine if you're just starting small and you make your beautiful posters, beautiful flyers. I have samples of all those things in my book. And, um, and it's, it's actually very simple. Step by step, I have a chart that marks off exactly when to do what, uh, what to do in every situation, how to pick up the slack if maybe a presenter or a church lady wanted to do it, but then she got busy or her husbands, all that stuff happens and you could be totally on your own. They might just open the door for you and that's it, but that's okay. That's yeah. all you need. You'd be prepared to do everything. And it's just a very in-house, authentic, organic way of doing things that your group can make, you know, one to $2,000 in a show. If everything is done right and a hundred people come mm -hmm. uh, and you do that two or three nights a week, and then you can go on to longer tours. We go out 10 days at a time, sometimes longer and fill up every single night of the week. Weekday oh, shows awesome. in churches start at seven, little potluck action. It's just, it's a win-win for everybody and anybody can do it. For sure. Okay. So uh, show us a copy, show us the cover of your book. Oh, here. And you got it with you. Book. Yep. Okay. I actually use my middle name too, Lisa Lynn Franco. Right. It's how to succeed. And it's for performers and presenters. And okay. Pre Quite often, presenters don't know what to do. So this is step by step. It has their own little squares. If you're a presenter, how much you want to get into this? Do you want to create a concert series? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to, you know? And so my hope is that I will have left this world with a lot more venues for musicians like us to play in. <laughs> awesome. So yeah. yeah, yeah. The whole idea is you don't need to be limited by other things. You can create anything yourself. You can make, totally make it happen. That's fantastic. So tell us a little bit more about you and your music. And well, I'm, my audience is uh, Christian and gospel, and I know uh -huh. you're you're not, but you are you are you do go to to churches oh, and yeah. you're, oh, you're totally. traveling around to the different churches. Yeah, we're doing, doing beautiful heart. And... We're doing beautiful harp music originally. Okay. I'll send you some CDs. I will send sure. you some so you can hear it. It's very uplifting. It's beautiful. We tell inspirational stories with our music. We use a lot of humor. It's instrumental music, so people can really use it to go somewhere else, and it goes well be backing up stories and really beautiful things. So it, it's healing music. I actually come from a rock background, but I discovered folk music and the harp as an adult, mm -hmm. and I really switched over to that. So it's... Um, it's really lovely. It's kind of Renaissance inspired, but it's mostly original music and some traditional Irish, Swedish folk music. And uh, I've just, I feel really lucky that I can do this full time and with abundance, you know, and, and have it fantastic. all work out. Yeah, it was a long that's, road, but you, you, anyone yeah. can do it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the goal of a, of a lot of artists is mm -hmm. to be able to do it full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just got to have a little magic with what you're doing. It's got to be good. And mm -hmm. you got to be diligent with the tasks that you're willing to do. And once you get in the groove, it's not hard. It's automatic and it's joyful. It's like catching fish and you're just catching fish all the time with every success. Okay. And it's easier and easier. 
Well, give us your website so uh, we can buy that book. <laughs> sure, yeah. You can get it either hardcover or a PDF copy. I just send it right over in a file to you. And it's on my website, lisalynn.com. And I'll spell that L-I-S-A-L-Y-N-N-E.com. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much sure. for joining me today. Thanks for having me and thanks for doing what you do. Thank you. Mm -hmm.